Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata back for another Facebook Live. Uh, today we are going to talk about fans. Uh, so springtime, everything's warming up. It's about that time uh, for cars to start overheating. So um, if you have questions, as always, put them in the comments. Uh, we're going to hold them to the end so that we don't we're not redundant, uh, we kind of stay focused, whatever else, uh, but definitely put them in there, we'll get to them. If we don't get to them in this video, uh, we'll answer them in the comments, so. Uh, first up, why do you need fans? Uh, well, a really basic overview on the engine's cooling system is that power, a byproduct of the way an internal combustion engine produces power is heat, quite a bit of it. So you've gotta get the heat out of the engine, and then you've gotta get the heat out of the coolant. So you're, first you're gonna transfer the heat into the coolant, um, and you can improve that with stuff like our reroute, uh, with a high pressure cap, although that comes with some caveats, um, the coolant mix, that type of thing. Uh, and then you wanna get the heat from the coolant out of the coolant, or, or specifically into the atmosphere. Uh, and that's what your radiator is for. So the more efficiently your radiator transfers heat to the atmosphere, the better. Uh, and the more airflow you can get across that radiator, that heat exchanger, uh, the more efficiently it's gonna uh, shed that heat and the more heat it's going to shed. So uh, now the Miata's cooling system is not spectacular to start off with. A healthy Miata and a stock Miata will usually be okay uh, with a stock cooling system. But the harder you drive it, uh, the more power you're making, that kind of thing can all tax the cooling system and it doesn't take a whole lot for a stock Miata cooling system to, to become overtaxed, at least with the NAs and NBs. The NCs and NDs are nowhere near as bad. Um, so, like I said, we're going to talk about fans. Um, and the more air you can pull across your heat exchangers, the better, the, the cooler the car is going to stay, or to be more specific, the closer to the operating temperature the car is going to stay, because there isn't really such a thing as overcooling a car. Um, and there are some qualifiers on there that I'm not going to get into, but the gist of it is you can't overcool a Miata anyway. Um, now, if you have a dedicated race car, it's only a track car, it has uh, a radiator and nothing else, it has a ton of ducting that's all very sorted out. You may or may not need fans, depending on how good your, uh, how good your ducting is, depending on how you're running, um, how many heat exchangers you have, so on and so forth. It's entirely possible that you won't need fans. Generally speaking, for street cars, well, for street cars, you need fans. Um, and the more power you produce and the harder you drive the car, the more you need those fans and the more, uh, the more airflow you need out of those fans. So, how do you evaluate fans? Um, not all fans are created equal, as we are going to demonstrate today with our stage one, two, and three, which are not the same. Um, not all fans are actually upgrades from the factory. Uh, Mazda had a decent idea of what they were doing, so you wanna be careful about that. So, first off, does the fan actually pull uh, air through the core of the radiator? So, where if you're, if you're looking at it, where is all the, fan, all the air that this fan is sucking in coming from? If it's just hanging out in space, it can leak around here. Um, some of it's gonna come through the core, but it's gonna take the path of least resistance. Uh, and that's why we have shrouds. So you wanna make sure that all of the air that the fan is going to pull is coming through the heat exchanger. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get into some specifics later. Um, how close the fan is to the core, you want it to be as far away as reasonably possible. Not sure if you guys have noticed, but these cars are miniature, so that's an easier said than done kind of thing. Uh, but still, that's what you want to aim for. Uh, and the big one is how much air, air can the fans pull? And that one comes with a really big qualifier. So. You can have a fan that pulls a million cubic feet per minute. That's the best thing in the world and somehow it does it all in this package. But as soon as you put any kind of static pressure in front of it, it drops off. And static pressure means the resistance it has to pull the air through. So that's specifically, that's gonna be your radiator, that's your AC condenser, that's your intercooler. If you've got oil cooler or anything else stacked up in front, all of that is gonna make it that much harder for that air to flow. 
So when you look at fans, you need to make sure, you know, great, it, it flows 2,500 CFM or whatever. Well, if they don't have a static pressure rating in pascals or millimeters of, of water attached to that, it's pretty much worthless. Um, so that's, and that is actually more or less exactly the difference between uh, the three fan kits that we have. Um, and we're just going to imagine the stage three kit. So, um, so these, let's see, to give a baseline, uh, the stock fans pull somewhere in the vicinity of 1600 uh, cubic feet per minute. Now that is at zero static pressure. Unfortunately, we don't have numbers as the pressure goes up, but it's reasonable to assume that it's probably a fairly similar bit worse curve uh, to our stage one fans here. Um, so I'll go into the difference between the different fan kits. So the stage one is going to be our least expensive and it's also going to be the easiest fitment. Um, the stage one is very low profile. Uh, so the, it, the thickness of the shroud is really just this dimension right here. Now we do include spacers because again, you want to get it as far off the shroud or off the core as possible, but excuse me, if you don't have um, the room, you don't have to use the spacers. Uh, the fans themselves are also very low profile and the motor in the middle is, is kind of the only part that sticks out and even it doesn't stick out that much. So these are actually better fitment uh, than the stock fans. Uh, and then they flow, but they flow quite a bit more. So it's 2,500 uh, cubic feet per minute. Uh, again, zero, zero pressure, zero pascals, millimeters of, of water, whatever. Um, and I'll show you a chart in a second here, uh, but 2,500 versus 1,600. So big step up from the stock stuff there. Pretty easy install. Um, wiring is just a straight, uh, you connect, you cut the stock fan plug off, you uh, wire it in right here. Uh, we include butt connectors and that's pretty much that. Uh, the one six does have a kit that makes it slightly more complicated because the stock AC wiring can't handle this fan. Also, we want this fan to come on with coolant temp uh, and not just the air conditioning, which is how those cars are wired. Uh, 94 to 05s, just plug it in, easy peasy. Um, and we do have these for the cross flow and upright or down flow radiators. So this one is our stage two, um, and it is uh, the sweetheart as far as I'm concerned. Um, if anybody's talked to me on the phone about uh, cooling upgrades, uh, they're probably annoyed because I try to push this on everybody because it is just a phenomenal setup. <clears throat> so this one is a very, very good middle ground. It's a brushless fan. So our stage, <clears throat> excuse me, our stage three kit is also a brushless fan. Basically what that means is that it's very smart uh, and it's very efficient. So it's efficient partially just because it's a brushless motor and they're more efficient. Um, it's also efficient because it only, and smart because it only spins as fast as it needs to. So this one works on PWM control, which means you either need a standalone ECU with a PWM output, because not all of them have that, uh, to drive this fan, or you need uh, the brain kit, as we call it, just a sensor that has everything built in. Um, and it is going to tell the fan how quickly to spin. So it comes on and starts spinning at a very slow speed at, um, 190 degrees. I should probably know that one. I forgot to research that. Apologies. But it comes on at a uh, temperature. And then the higher that temperature gets, uh, the faster the fan spins. So that means that under normal conditions, you're not hearing it because it's very quiet, because it's not spinning very fast. Um, it's not sucking down a lot of power uh, because it doesn't need to. So your better fuel efficiency, your better horsepower, not huge numbers, but still there's a lot less load on the alternator uh, for that reason. The other thing is that it's a soft start. So with these guys, they're on or off, just like the stock fans on uh, the NAs and NBs. Uh, with this guy, the sensor says, okay, you need to turn on. The fan says, cool. And it kind of does a uh, parking phase and then it slowly ramps up. So whereas these, you'll see a spike in your current draw and then it'll come down. This doesn't have that. It just goes up to whatever it needs. Very nice there. Um, and it flows stupendous amounts of air. 
So this guy actually flows about the same as this guy at zero static pressure, but Travis, now's as good a time as any uh, to uh, look at our chart here. But if you look at the chart, so this, and you'll notice that we don't even bother with the zero uh, pressure. So this is, you know, 120 uh, pascals or so that it starts. So this is where the stage one is, and you can see it drops off and it, it's about done at somewhere 250, 260 uh, pascals. This is the stage two. So at zero pascals, these two come together, but this one, the stage two, doesn't really drop off as, uh, I mean, of course it does, but when this one stalls, this one's still flowing, was that mm, 16, 1700 cubic feet per minute of air when the stage one is just stopped. And again, imagine the stock fans probably here. I'm guessing we don't have specific numbers, but probably somewhere in this vicinity is my guess. Um, and you can also see the stage three here. Uh, it's two 12 inch fans instead of one monster 14 inch fan. Uh, so it starts off higher because the fans are not quite as big. It's a little more affected by the static pressure than the stage two is, but it's still above the stage two the whole way. So um, that is really the big thing here. Now, <clears throat> now talking about the noise, um, please don't misunderstand. When these are at full tilt, you will not uh, be unaware. Uh, they are not quiet, but they're only noisy when they need to be noisy. Um, so very, very well behaved. Um, they, they work fine with air conditioning. Um, they have a second wire uh, off of this guy that, is, um, that basically triggers the fan to full speed. So you can wire your AC into that is the really short version. Um, all the details are in the instructions, and that'll kick this to full speed. You probably don't need full speed for your air conditioning, so you can ha uh, put a potentiometer in there and you can dial it down uh, so that your AC fan speed is whatever it needs to be. Um, and it will, whichever is the greater of the two, uh, the fan will do. So say you've got your AC set to 50% duty cycle, but your temperature is such that you need a 70% duty cycle, you get a 70% duty cycle, out of, uh, or in terms of fan speed. just. Exchange duty cycle with fan speed if you'd like there. <clears throat> uh, so the wiring is a little bit more involved. Um, you do need a breaker. Um, it's, it's heavier gauge, but otherwise it's, it's really not too big of a deal. Um, it's actually not that different than the 1.6 version of these guys. Um, and it's effectively the same wiring for the stage two and the stage three. The stage three just has two fans. That's really it. Let's see here. I think I have got it all. Yeah, so this one is also available in a cross flow or an upright or down flow uh, radiator. Basically, if your tanks are on the top and the bottom, like the stock setup, you have an upright or a down flow. If your uh, tanks are on the sides, then you have a cross flow radiator, which is also a giant benefit and I would strongly recommend. Also, uh, for those of you who have requested it, we are working on uh, basically a shroud upgrade kit. So if you have, so you had an upright um, with one of our fan kits and then you want to go to a cross flow, so you only need the shroud, no problem. Um, we are working on that now. I don't have an ETA, but soon. Uh, okay, and then we come to the big boy, uh, the stage three. So we don't have a stage three out here, so we'll look at it on, in here. Um, and I'll go through, I'll show you the, the installed as well. So the, the stage three uh, is, pulls a ton. It pulls a lot of air, as you guys saw on that chart. Um, now I'm away from my notes, but 4,300 CFM at, at zero pressure, something like that, uh, a lot. Uh, now it is also the most expensive fan kit we sell, uh, and it is also the most difficult to fit. So because we're cramming, or because of the design of the fan, the shroud is actually very deep on these guys um, because the fan itself is very deep. Uh, and since there's two that we're cramming next to each other, uh, they are pretty tight in there. So it is doable, but, and the instructions spell it out, but if you're considering it, be sure that you read the instructions first, talk to us if need be, uh, make sure that you're, you're a problem solver. Um, 
it is doable, but it is going to be a challenge. Um, it is also pretty tight on the sway bar. Uh, if you have one of our sway bars, it'll be okay. It might touch just a little bit. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so it might touch just a tiny bit. Um, you might get a little bit of wear on the fan uh, or the sway bar there. Uh, but such is the, the cost of performance, basically. Um, and nothing that's going to be, it's going to make any any kind of difference. Uh, now, if you have a sway bar that's bigger than ours, and we use a one inch on the one eight cars, uh, then it's going to be a problem. Uh, now, the one six sway bar on modified is farther back. So those cars actually uh, have a little bit better fitment as far as that's concerned. So we'll go uh, kind of backwards here. So this is the stage two installed. Um, you can see it's still pretty tight, but it's it does have more room on the sway bar. Uh, we have not tested it, but if you've got a big sway bar, I'm going to guess that this one will fit about the same as uh, our sway bar on the Stage 3. Uh, one thing to be aware of, we actually use these low-profile <clears throat> nuts here uh, to keep it as low-profile as possible, and the nut does line up with the sway bar. So... Uh, just be aware of that going in. If you're using a big sway bar, you may have to problem solve a little bit on that. Um, but this one works extremely, extremely well. Um, and again, this, this is a sweetheart as far as I'm concerned, cause it's a really nice middle ground. Um, not the cheapest thing ever, but it flows a stupendous amount of air. It's really well behaved. Um, and it is definitely easier to fit than the stage three and less expensive as well. So there's this guy. Um, and this is the crossflow version. Um, like I said, that's the upright version over there. This is the crossflow version. Um, and this is probably a prototype slightly. Yeah, so production is gonna have slightly better fitment, um, finish, that kind of thing than, than this guy does. And then we have, um, we're gonna pretend like this is our stage one. This is actually our old stage two, but it's practically the same thing. Um, just imagine that this fan is also on this side. Uh, our old stage two had a little bit bigger motor. Our new stage two is hugely better. But you can see there's tons of room on the sway bar. Um, it's really low profile. It's easy to fit. Uh, it's easy to wire in. We actually kind of did the opposite. You can see we just butt connected the stock uh, pigtail onto the new fan. Um, and that's fine. If you prefer a factory look, no problem. Sure call. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's pretty much that. Uh, this is the upright version. Again, we do have it in a cross flow. I mean, the thing that I neglected to mention is we do have uh, some flaps here. So if the speed of the air coming into the front overwhelms uh, what the fans are able to pull, uh, these flaps open up. Uh, so that's something that's common on all of our shrouds. We put as many flaps in there uh, as we can. Um, uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a lot of flaps. <laughs> so on the stage one and on the stage three, the state, yeah, they both have two. That's it. Um, and you can see them right here a little bit easier. So there's one up here uh, on the top of the radiator uh, or the shroud and one on the bottom. So basically if there's suction, as in the fans are pulling, this sucks flat. You don't have an air leak. Uh, all the air from the fans is coming through the core and not literally, but as much as, as practical or as possible. Um, if the road speed, the air speed coming into the mouth of the car overwhelms what the fans can pull, then these just flap open. That's the simplest thing in the world, but it works perfectly. Um, and you can see on the stage two, we actually did have a fair amount of room. So we've got a bunch of uh, flaps there. Um, yeah, 3,500 uh, CFM uh, at zero pascals for the stage three guy. So what should you buy? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, the really short version in my uh, mind is a stage two. Uh, that's not literally true, but I am, it's impossible to not make the I am a fan of this fan joke when you're talking about fans. So apologies or you're welcome, whatever your preferences are. Uh, but it's, the, the fitment is a little tough, but not real tough. Um, it flows a stupendous amount of air. It's very friendly. It's awesome. So 
I recommend this for everyone, largely because of the behavior of it. That having been said, if you have a stock car that you drive to work every day and you don't drive it hard and you don't drive it on the track and it doesn't have any extra power, you're probably fine with a stock setup. If you have a problem in that situation, uh, let us know, pick our brains, because you probably don't need anything else. Again, it's not going to hurt you, but it may not be necessary. Now, the Stage 1 is great uh, for a budget. It does flow quite a bit better than stock. It is very easy to fit. It's a good deal. Um, so this, this one I do like as well, but this one is phenomenal. It's, it's just a really, really, really good setup. Um, but if you need all of everything, you're having all sorts of problems, um, you're making 400 horsepower, no ducting, air conditioning, and you take the car on track, I'm not gonna guarantee that that, car is, or that fan setup is gonna solve your problems, but it is going to be a huge step in the right direction. Uh, and absolutely something that I would recommend for you. So again, more expensive, a little bit tougher fitment, uh, but worth it if you need all of that. Okay, so I think that's my overview. Um, again, we're holding all the questions, so I'm going to go through the questions that uh, we got ahead of time, uh, and then I will bother Kyle for any of the follow-up questions. So, uh, so this one I didn't fully understand. Um, the question is, elaborate on how amperage affects CFM, um, and I apologize, CFM is cubic feet per minute, or the volume of air that these fans are uh, flowing. I should have said that at the beginning. So CFM fans with low draw, then not, then not to have high CFM. I think basically, the, you can kinda sorta, if you're comparing brushed fans and then separately brushless uh, fans, the more amps those fans pull, the higher the airflow for static pressure is going to be, is probably a safe way to put it. Basically, um, this fan uh, is going to pull more amps at full tilt uh, than these fans, and then the Stage 3 fans as a whole are going to pull more than these at full tilt. Again, that's where the brushless is, has a huge advantage because this only pulls as much air and therefore as many amps as it needs to. So I, I hope that answered that question. Um, if not, please let us know and, and we'll try to elaborate on it. Uh, benefits of a manual switch versus an ECU. Manual switches terrify me because if you have a manual switch in your car and you forget to flip that switch and you're not paying attention to your gauge, you overheat your car. I am not a fan of that. Um, now, if you have a switch where you can turn your fan on, but if that switch is off, then the ECU takes over, so you're not going to overheat. Okay, cool. Um, I probably wouldn't bother. You can do that, or if you have a standalone, you can turn your uh, on temp down a little bit uh, for um, to kind of pre-cool the engine. Um, that's... That's kind of the bigger heat sink argument. Um, that's not going to help your car cool in the long term in the big picture, the overall. However, it will take longer for your car to overheat because it starts at a cooler temperature than if you just let the fans turn on when uh, was the appropriate time based on your uh, on temp. So if you're having trouble with that on track, you can have an override switch. So you turn your fans on when you go out on track, you're kind of pre-cooling the car a little bit, so you just get an extra couple of laps out of it before you overheat. That's, that's sound logic there. That does make sense. But again, I very strongly caution you to make that the only thing, because if you forget and you don't watch your gauge, your engine's done. Uh, how often have we seen melted fan blades? Kyle, have you ever seen a melted fan blade? No. I have seen a melted oil cap, which was spectacular. Um, I think that engine was still... It was clearly still running when it melted the oil cap. I don't know if it was by the time it got to us, but uh, not a thing that we've really seen. Uh, so not a big concern. And I guess I could kind of segue. The, the brushless fans are built to a much, I don't know much, but they're, they're built to a very high standard, higher than these guys are. So that's awesome as far as dust proof, as far as water. Um, there's a military spec that these guys have to meet and these don't. So that's awesome. We've also never had a problem with these, so maybe overkill. But they're all, all small products are extremely durable. We've had very, very good luck with them, and we've been selling them for 
20 years? A very long time, anyway. Okay, data how on how OE assembly performs versus upgrades. So that's, that's kind of a kind of sort of gray, kind of sort of not thing. Uh, basically, the only data we have is what the stock fans pull at um, zero pressure. So again, that's 1600 CFM. Our smallest kit pulls 2500 CFM. Um, I don't know how that the stock fans drop off uh, with static pressure, but again, I would assume it's pretty similar to this. Uh, how efficient is the stock ND Rad? Uh, I don't know. We haven't done any scientific testing on it. Uh, I think it's actually pretty good. Um, we haven't seen a huge number of issues with that. Uh, we, we did actually see issues with uh, our triple pass cross flow rate, or well, they're all cross flows, but anyway, our triple pass ND radiator uh, that we were selling initially uh, to the point where we actually replaced all of those with single pass uh, radiators because it performed dramatically better in our testing. But uh, as far as the stock radiator is concerned, it's good. It can be upgraded, but it's, it's certainly not bad to start off with. Um, we do, so all of these kits are for, as I mentioned, the NA and the NB. Um, we do not currently have kits for the NC and the ND. Um, that's not out of a lack of love for you guys. Uh, it's because generally they don't need them quite as well or quite as much. So uh, they do have better shrouds. Uh, they do have better fans. Uh, there's a lot of the technology that's here. I believe that they both have brushless fans. Not 100% on that, but I think so. I mean, I think, does the ND, stock ND have uh, bypass flaps on it? It does. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that we've built, uh, sorry, you probably can't hear it. Kyle said that, yes, the uh, stock ND shroud does have bypass flaps. I don't think the NC does, does it? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the same technology uh, that we're doing here. And actually, the, the radiator, our radiator is the same thing. Um, we have a cross flow for the NAs and NBs. The stock is an upright. Uh, the NC and ND uh, are cross flows. So. Um, is there a speed? Uh, is there a speed at which the fans create a restriction in the system? How does this correlate to another restriction, for example, an intercooler in the airflow? Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, there is a speed at which the fans are doing you more harm than good. What speed that is is going to vary wildly based on your setup. So, on a stock car that doesn't have its airflow very well managed you're pretty much gonna need fans the whole time. Um, on a crazy WRC car with a huge cutout in the hole, in the hood and all sorts of ducting and um, wicker bills and whatever else to create low pressure zones to help suck, them, suck the air out, uh, you probably don't need fans. Now you still need it for when you're idling, but otherwise. And, and Everything else is in between, which I know is really vague and not a, if you have this, you need this kind of thing. Generally speaking, fans are beneficial. Um, if, and the only way you're gonna answer that question for your specific uh, setup is by experimentation. Uh, if you don't have at least hood louvers and some kind of ducting to force all the air that goes into the mouth to go through the heat exchangers, you need fans and you need big ones. Um, if you have it all ducted in very tight, uh, and managed, you may just need a little one for when you're uh, in, the, in the pit lane kind of thing, in the paddock, so. It's a, not a real cut and dry on that one. Uh, how do you connect a dual fan kit if you don't have factory AC? Um, the short version is the 1.6 wiring kit that I mentioned for these guys. We do sell that separately. Um, it's not complicated. You can come up with it on your own if you want, just a breaker, a relay, and some wiring. Uh, and basically, it means that when the primary, as in coolant temp fan, comes on, uh, it also triggers your AC fan. That's it. Um, that does mean that both of the fans come on at the same time, which can cause an idle droop situation. Um, it's going to be a hit to your alternator. So if your headlights are on, they might dim for a second before that spike subsides. And again, yet another reason why I'm such a fan of our brushless uh, setup. So, cause it doesn't have that cause it's a soft start. Why would you buy one for your stock Miata? Uh, you would buy one for your stock Miata because you are planning to upgrade or because you really like the way they look or because, uh, you really like the soft start on this. Now the stock fans are not noisy, so that's not a real compelling reason, but Hey, 
I'm not here to judge. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, this one, to pull the amount of air that the car needs to be cool, this one will give you, uh, will be quieter at that speed. Um, and it's also going to give you a wild amount of headroom. Realistically, you probably don't need it. I would buy it for a stock Miata if you're planning for track use or for turbo uh, application in the future and you want to make the car as bulletproof as possible now uh, so that once you do have that power, or once you are uh, putting the car into that usage, you don't uh, have problems that now, all right, I spent 200 bucks on that track day and I can't get through uh, more than two laps without overheating. So that money's up in the air that, you know, I burned that money up kind of thing. That's why I would buy it. Um, so, uh, and by the way, all this applies to the Mazda Speed as well. Um, all these kits work with the Mazda Speed. The same logic applies to the Mazda Speed. The Mazda Speed's a little goofy in its fan control, which I'm not going to get into now, but the short version is this all still works fine with the Mazda Speed. Um, so do we recommend a reroute with them? Yeah, uh, it, but again, it, it kind of depends on your purposes and how much you need. My general progression for cooling upgrades, if you don't want to just throw everything at it at once so you don't have to worry about it, is cross-flow radiator, uh, fan kit, and again, preferably this one, uh, and then the reroute. Um, having a turbo car does make our reroute more important because of the way the coolant is managed there. I'm not going to get into those details now. Uh, but that's still the progression that I would go in. Uh, what is recommended for a 250 to 300 horse uh, track car? Would that change if you incorporated ducting? I think I covered that. Um, basically, this, this guy, between how big it is and how many bypasses it has, is probably not going to be much uh, or any, if any, kind of restriction to a car with full ducting. But it also may not be necessary uh, in a car with full ducting because aerodynamically you're doing such a good job, theoretically, of pulling that air out. So, uh, Which would be ideal for a daily and or track car? Uh, again, I think we're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. I really like that one because it pulls a ton of air and it's super friendly. That's really the short version. But any of them would work fine for a daily or a track car. Uh, this one's going to be noisier. Uh, that one's going to be more expensive. Um, yeah. Uh, can these be run with stock ECU? Absolutely. So these guys, easy peasy, plug it in, no big deal, or do, do our little wiring that we talked about. Uh, with all the brushless, yep, we've got this guy. Uh, again, um, if you have a standalone ECU that has a PWM output, you can use that instead, and you can manipulate your curves as you'd like. Um, be sure to follow our instructions. Do not guess at that because there is some weirdness there. Totally doable, just read the instructions. Uh, but this guy makes it work totally fine with a stock ECU. So you are going to, with a brushless fan in this, you are completely going to ignore the stock fan wiring. It's not going to have anything to do with it anymore. You're going to do this, and you're going to hook one of the wires up to, um, to your AC uh, so that it comes on with your AC. Um, and I should mention that, so this is a 3 8 NPT. You can drill a tap a hole wherever you want. Uh, we also, and I suspect this is what most people do, uh, have a hose splice that has a 3 8 NPT. I think that's 3 8 now I, now I think it might be half. Anyway, whatever size it is, we, uh, it's a hose splice uh, that goes on there. So easy peasy. Uh, is it true fans only help below a certain speed? Yes, huge qualifiers on that. Um, if you have a stock bodied car, you need fans and the best fans you can put in there, uh, the better off you will be, particularly, and the need for that goes up with horsepower, getting kind of redundant. Drawbacks to stage three on a stock engine. Tough to fit, expensive, that's it. Do you need it? No. Um, is it worth it? Well, that's your call, uh, but it is gonna be uh, friendlier. Uh, it is gonna give you slightly more fuel economy and uh, power, uh, and it's gonna give you a wild amount of headroom. Um, if you really want all those advantages, awesome, buy a stage two. Um, the stage three is doable. I don't want to make it sound like it's the worst thing in the world, uh, but it is a little bit more of a headache to fit, and it's just not worth it when the stage two ex exists. So, uh, Compatibility of different stages with non-FM radiators. So the stage three is compatible with our radiator, 
Um, it should theoretically be compatible with other crossflow radiators, but we have not verified that, so be prepared for a bit of problem solving if you go that route. Um, if there is problem solving, it should just be you know, taking a file or a die grinder or something to open up the holes in the fan shroud a little bit, nothing too complicated. Um, for our stage one and our stage two, uh, we do offer them for upright and crossflow radiators, so it'll work with either. And again, if you've got an upright now and you wanna upgrade the fans and then, but you don't wanna block yourself off from a crossflow in the future, no problem. We do not currently, but will have uh, an upgrade kit for that. Um, I will say that in our experience, getting the fan mounting bosses uh, accurate on aftermarket radiators appears to be very challenging. So we've tried to design in as much slop as possible. You can see why everything is slotted uh, on all of our shrouds. Um, that's probably gonna be enough, but I can't guarantee that. So, um, and also, I don't know how I forgot this before, uh, excuse me, your shroud will, will come like this uh, and then you peel this off. This is just a skin uh, to keep it nice and pretty uh, until you actually put it in your car. So uh, it will look like this or even better uh, once you peel that off. So just FYI there. Uh, okay, power draw. Excellent question. Um, so there's a spike with these guys when they turn on. These guys, if they're both on, they're gonna pull about 28 amps. This guy is going to pull 40 amps, and the stage three is going to pull 50 amps. Now, there's some pretty big qualifiers on that. For one, these are going to spike above that and then settle back down to that, and that's what they're going to pull. If both fans are on, they're pulling 28 amps, unless it's a startup surge. Done. The brushless fans are only going to pull that much at full tilt. Um, and yes, the uh, mathematically inclined amongst you who know the output of an NA alternator uh, will realize that you're gonna be very borderline with that. Now, with a stage three and a normal battery, you still won't have a problem with it. Your battery is gonna be the reserve and the fans are not gonna be on all the time and it's gonna take a long time. When we were first developing this kit, um, I drove that car to California and on the second day of eight something hour days with the fan switched to full speed, not cycling with the AC, uh, we killed the battery. But it took 12 to 14 hours of basically continuous high speed use to, for that to happen. If you have it wired properly and it's wired into your AC, it's gonna turn on when your compressor turns on, they're gonna turn off when your compressor turns off, which gives the alternator an opportunity to charge up the battery. So it's something to be aware of but not a real big concern. But, I mean, you can see pretty heavy gauge wire, so it can pull uh, big amps if need be. Uh, okay, and that is all the questions that I have from ahead of time. Kyle, what do we have um, from right now? Um, I think probably the best way to cover this one is to show people the depth of the 14 inch fan. Um, there's a question on um, the ability to slim the stage two shroud anymore to fit better. Um, and how, it, how does it compare to like the stage three? Comparing okay. Comparing the stage two and stage three depths. Okay. So uh, the question is, the really short version of the question is, what is the depth of the stage two and how can we make it better? So I, I kind of mentioned briefly, um, these mount differently. So if you look at the way the stage one mounts, it mounts to the face of the fan. If you look at the way the stage two and stage three mount, it's kind of to the back of the fan. So where this, uh, the shroud, the fan is 100% behind the shroud. On this one, the fan, the fan is something like 90% within the shroud. So um, you can't really get it any closer, unfortunately, is the short version. And we struggle with that quite a bit. We actually angled the shroud slightly, not this much, but in this direction uh, to give a little bit more clearance for the sway bar there because it is so tight. We do kind of break our own rule here because this part uh, of the fan is pretty close, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch from the shroud, which is not ideal. It would definitely be better back farther. However, having this fan in a Miata with that compromise is still dramatically better than not having this fan in a Miata. Um, so 
you are welcome to experiment, but unless you're planning to put a hole in the core of your radiator, I, I don't think you're gonna do any better. If you can, please tell us, because we would love to know. Um, again, tight, but doable uh, for most applications. So kind of follow up with that is just comparing the stage two and three. I'm sorry, you did say that, yeah. So the comparison between the stage two and the stage three uh, really is, is pretty similar. Uh, the stage three is pulled out from the radiator a little bit. Um, we did not, uh, it was a thought that occurred to us, or Kyle specifically, after the fact a little bit, but on the stage three, you could probably angle it a little bit to get a little more uh, clearance on the sway bar there. But generally, you're not gonna get a lot more clearance. Basically, with this one, I don't think you're gonna get any more clearance. With a stage three, you might get a little more clearance. Uh, my, and the stage three is worse on the sway bar, but the biggest issue with the stage three is its width. Um, we actually have to kind of do this with the shroud uh, to get it as tight as possible. So you can see that it's, and actually, if you see right down here, it actually tucks underneath. I don't know how well you can see that, but it actually, the fan tucks underneath the frame rail. So doable, but tight, very tight. Did I get it that time? Sorry, I, I missed part of the question the first time. Yeah, I, I think that answers it. Okay, if that didn't, please tell us what we missed. Yeah, and then I have one more. Okay. Uh, do we have any plans to release a shroud that will also, that will hold a stage two fan as well as an oil cooler next to it? Do we have plans to release a stage two shroud with an oil cooler next to it? Well, that's an easy answer, no. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean that we won't, but I'm not completely convinced that that makes sense. I would have to, I would have to sit down and, and think about that for a little bit because you'd have to have airflow off of it. Um, I don't know whether we could count on the airflow from the fan to kind of pull in this way through the oil cooler. Um, and I don't know if we have enough room to put fans back here for the oil cooler. So uh, maybe that's an intriguing thought. Had not considered that, obviously. Um, but I don't know. Not filled with confidence, but maybe. Um, I will say that we are not going to do another twin cooler, which is a radiator and an oil cooler, uh, because we did that in the past and it didn't end up well, because we took away too much room from the, cool, from the coolant volume and, and the surface area for it to exchange heat. Uh, and also we put the oil, which is very hot, hotter than the coolant, uh, right next to it so it can, right next to the coolant, so it could conduct straight into the coolant, which is also not ideal. So um, maybe we'll think about that one. Kyle, do we have any more questions? That is it. Okay. So uh, as always, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will be back next Thursday with another Facebook Live, uh, as yet to be determined, I assume. Um, if you have more questions, again, put them in the comments, uh, and make sure to follow us on all the socials and all that fun stuff. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.